I was supposed to is like drama. You know? So it was a, s a spectacular event. And this is what the sea defenses look like there. And here's our answer, temporarily. That's the footballers on the vulnerable stretches. Um, you can see, I don't know when these walls were built, but I hazard, Bert, would you give hazard a guess? How long ago? 80 years? 100? 30 years. 30 years? 3-0? Thir and you already see the reinforcements here corroded. If you look at the, um, the metal, salt water deterioration. So it doesn't take much to uh, cause them to collapse. And here you can see some of the um, indentations or grooves in which you have the metal. So the extent to which this is now a uh, serious matter. As we speak, the tides are 9.9 .9 feet. At that time, it was 9.9 .9 and 10 feet, but we had a full moon, which aggravated the situation. Luckily, now we are in a, a new moon phase. And of course, the, some of the challenges that sea and river defenses have to cope with, the presence of so-called squatters on the reserve, and this is what the uh, Leonora Hospital looked like after those. So, as I mentioned earlier, the mining districts, many of the routes into the interior were pioneered by um, pork knockers or those who were supporting the pork knockers or industry, such as reunion, uh, the manganese mines in the Northwest District. The routes opened up into the Masruni and Cayuni. And of course, the cattle trail, the Latham, here and linking um, now with Brazil. The right here, you have the protected areas, Shell Beach, Kaichur, Iwakrama, the Kanuku Mountains, and the Waiwai owned conservation area. But these other green areas here are areas that have been determined by the scientists to be areas of high biodiversity importance. So when developing infrastructure, one has to be cognizant of the impact of infrastructure on biodiversity and ecosystems. These are some of the routes opening up to the interior. Here you have the Cayuni, Cayuni River going to Bartica, the Masruni River, and the road from uh, Itabali here going towards um, Olive Creek, um, and to Taraparu, where um, EPK Sand Spring um, is hoping to develop a mine. This is the road from Bokhal going to Aurora. Here you have Guyana Gold Inc. And that is another linkage, hopefully, this gap between the road coming from Matthews Ridge and the road going to Bokhal. If we close that gap, it gives the people in the Northwest District a route rather than coming around the Atlantic or going through the Barabani. Um, here is the border with Brazil, and uh, as you know, this is a, a highway from Manaus, uh, coming close to our frontier here at Bomfi, but also extending up into Venezuela. That's the Region 9 map. A lot of people don't know much beyond Lethem, going towards the south to the Cuyuini and the Mururi Mountains. Uh, some of the essential na uh, national infrastructure will be dealing with the Burbese Bridge. I hope uh, Engineer Joe Holder will be here with us um, to give his uh, brief on the bridge because he was pivot pivotal to that bridge, along with Mr. Terence Fletcher. And, um, there, that will be a panel discussion scheduled to take place in April. Again, opening up of these routes to the interior recognizes the infrastructure that we al already have, with the extent to which it's being maintained, it's very questionable. This is the Denham Bridge, suspension bridge, built to link Maria with Bartica, built in 1933 by a Scottish engineer. And while some improvements may have been done since I took these photographs, the reality is a lot more needs to be done. Checking the tension of these wires, okay, and um, ensuring that 
the uh, amplitude. I remember the last time I walked on this bridge, there was already an amplitude. Okay, whether that is within the tolerance, I don't know. Huh? Yeah, but people have been crossing bullures, isn't it? The thing about these bridges is there's no way bridge. So even if there is a restriction in weight going over it, no one knows. Um, the bridge over the Amrara at Lindem, again, this was a, a real bridge to connect up with Rockstone and ore coming from that side of the river to uh, Georgetown, to um, Linden or Mackenzie as it was then. This is the only bridge across the Amrara River at this point, and given the volume of traffic one anticipates, then the question is asked, is this uh, enough or should we be investing in another um, crossing? The Kanji Bridge, we spoke about that earlier, but it was built to carry 32 tons. So while it might be in pretty good shape, again, as far as I know, there's no way bridge. So how many, does ve how many vehicles are on the bridge at any time if it is built to carry 32 tons? Demar Harbor Bridge again, and uh, I can't remember the year when this happened. When? 2012? Yeah, 2012. And I think a pontoon got, what, what was it? Um, just collapsed? Yeah. Um, those of you who are not frequent visitors to the interior, these are also very essential bridges. The Pirara Bridge, um, which crosses the Pirara River. And um, last year, or uh, yeah, early last year, it was straightened out. A lot of the deaths and accidents occurred on this bridge because there was a, a very acute bend here before approaching the bridge. And if you didn't know it, you actually ran right over. But this doesn't inspire confidence. OK? It doesn't. Uh, Eclipse Falls Bridge, now this is the bridge which was used by the rail um, moving ore, manganese ore from Matthews Ridge to Port Kaichuma. Um, again, I'm not sure who's maintaining this bridge. That, that's, that's a bit this, was, this one here? Yeah, that was the last This After, that's you that's know what year? Uh, this one here? Okay. Thank you for that, okay. So, that Arakaka Bridge is the one that collapsed many years ago, and we attempted to rebuild it. If you remember, the army engineers were there. Um, Humphrey, you remember Humphrey? Actually, they built the bridge. Yeah. That bridge collapsed. But this is an acropanel bridge. Yeah. Was this made from? Was this made from panels from the Itabali? Okay. This is a private enterprise. This is the Demra River, just below Canister Falls. And this is a forest concessionaire who has built what they call, I'm told, a Roman arch bridge. Logs over logs over logs. Um, so that's what the Demra River looks like um, below Canister Falls. Uh, these are other designs. Uh, again, entrepreneurs, people who have to get goods and services to whether it's their mining operations or timber operations, have invested in these bridges. Um, this was the one built by Rongan, because the previous one to this, they built it without recognizing that there's what we call a bushwash. So the first bushwash just moved the bridge. And this design here allows them, even at high water, to still cross. This is where you have the problem of um, design for bridges, not anticipating the, the use of the type of use. And this is a, a dozer which was being taken for the South Rupununi. Mm -hmm. The weight of it just collapsed the bridge. And this is, a, again, a supply truck going to Lethem, um, which went off the beam, and that's the result. So it's a... Don't forget those bridges. I know, but, yeah, but, but the point I'm making is that they are essential bridges or else regions will be cut off. And the extent to which they're being maintained is questionable. Right? I'm just highlighting 
the fact that while we're talking in a visionary way of other bridges, like the new Demerara Harbour Bridge and so on, we have existing infrastructure which must be maintained. Okay. Uh, this was the one at Molson, again, um, overladen. The Linden Highway is now, what, 50-odd uh, years old? 60 years? And, uh, this was ex the experience last year where it undermining the foundation of the road, leading to all sorts of problems. And what we are doing is just patching when, in fact, there should be major overhaul. Road to Lethem um, in the wet season. Uh, I mean, there's a road, but the cumbering is not maintained. The runoffs are not being maintained. So when you get vehicle grooves in the road and the rain falls, you know what happened. I took this photograph to show that even in Georgetown, you know, if you don't pay, pay attention to maintenance, you end up with this. I mean, it's fixed since then. But if in Georgetown, at the Botanical Gardens, we can allow this to happen, OK? And here, my friend Stuart Hughes, who happened to be in Lethem, a month ago, in February, and went on his morning for ambulation and sent an email to me to say, where is the English sign? It's gone. Somebody actually stole it. This is on the Takatu Bridge, the official international crossing between Bonfi, Brazil, and Guyana. Stuart found that it is gone. Stolen by Guyana. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, and of course, this is part of the problem in terms of national discipline. Okay? And uh, the last time I showed what I saw at 63 Beach when I visited there three weeks ago. Um, in a visionary way, this is what the vision of Durban Park was, is perhaps, I don't know. This is what we have now. Um, this is the Takatu Bridge. And this is the vision we have of what the CGIA would look like when it's completed. And of course, these icons are in various states, stages of disrepair. Some of them maintenance work is being done. Um, here is St. George's Cathedral. I think they've finished the north face. They're now working on the western and southern side. Um, the Starbuck Market, of course, you know the collapse of the stelling and some of the areas here. I'm not sure the extent to what. The clock is still showing the time it was showing maybe 20 years ago or 15 years ago. And of course, sad to see what is happening with this icon. Um, this is the IRSA project, the Integrated Infrastructure for Northern South America, which envisages highways linking Venezuela, Brazil, Guyana, the coast of, South, of um, Northern Coast South America, passing through Suriname to the state of Amapá, um, and fiber optic cables and so on. The whole idea here is connectivity. And the point Mr. Alexander made about the bridge over the Quarantine River and the extent to which that will catalyze movement because Brazilians have to move stuff 2,000 miles down the Amazon from Manaus. And the importance of the road to Guyana um, is not lost on us. Whether it should be a road or a railway is another matter, or both. But definitely connectivity will lead to all sorts of benefits. And um, this is something which you know, if we're looking for something that is transformational in terms of development, uh, what we're saying about the green economy and so on, we have to exercise our minds while looking at the maintenance. We also have to be strategic in our thinking. This is what I put together based on my own knowledge. Um, hopefully, the connectivity with the Northwest District using the Bokhal um, Aurora and linking with um, the road from Matthews Ridge so that you're providing um, options to the movement by ferry. I mean, the people in the Northwest District here are 
crying out for systems because they produce the largest avocado pears. Cows are eating the pears of the boy. It doesn't pay them to pick it and ship it because, you know, the cost. Given the vulnerability of the coast, <coughs> given the fact that sugar is already uh, in, that, in some difficulties, severe difficulties, we've touted the intermediate savannas and the Rupununi savannas, portions of it, as a second agricultural frontier. But if we're going to be competitive and we don't have the logistics and we don't have the energy and we don't have the dem demographic shifts which are necessary, then it's all talk. And I feel that we need to um, advocate a serious discussion, government in partnership with the private sector and civil society, and the end users or the people who are going to be benefiting from all of this. We're hearing talk about the uh, Sovereign Wealth Fund and the extent to which uh, some of that fund perhaps could be invested, should be invested in developing this strategic infrastructure so that the Dutch disease, as we were led to believe, uh, we would not be dependent on oil and gas, but would also develop our agricultural, um, not only for food security, but in terms of export potential, um, or energy in terms of the hydropower, Chumachumari. I don't know what is the delay in Chumachumari, but I do know that dynamic engineering has been moving a pace to try and get that um, operating at least 1.5 megawatts, which would be transformational in terms of the Madia sub-region. So I thought I should share this with you as a look forward to the next presentation, which will be focusing on the Demerara Harbor Bridge, and then in a more strategic um, sense, persons like Stuart Hughes and so on will be taking up the uh, discussion on the strategic infrastructure.